The universe is vast, dark, cold, empty, and dead. Everywhere we've ever looked outside of Earth, it is all completely dead. If you saw aliens out there, you might be scared of them. You might wonder what they do to you, but you should be more scared that you see no aliens. You see absolutely nothing. Because likely something out there is killing everything, and you're next. <laughs> Start at the beginning. Life looks different. Dead things look different from living things. The lichen on this rock looks different than the rock. If we look at Earth from space, civilization looks different than a dead planet. The atmosphere looks different than a dead planet. This is the deepest view we have of the universe. Looking billions of light years back, in this view, we see 15,000 galaxies, most of which are billions of years old, in this two minutes of arc view. In this view and in every other view we've ever seen of the universe, everything we see is explainable by it all being completely dead. It may be active, it may be energetic, but it's dead. There's no life, there's no organization, there's no civilization. What would it look like if it wasn't dead? Maybe it would look like this. This might be the view of a civilization that we see a billion light years away that had taken a billion light years, a billion years to evolve. It could have grown very slowly about the speed that stars orbit the galaxy, spread out over 200,000 light years. That's all the speed it would take. And then you might see something this view in, in this view. We, of course, don't know if it would look exactly like that. It might look like this or even like this. But the point is, we've never seen anything like that. All we've ever seen is lots of dead matter. That should scare you. Fermi's question was, where is everybody? Fermi was a famous physicist. People have asked the question before. I'll rephrase it as, out of a billion, billion planets we can see, why don't we see anyone out there changing it, making it visible, making it different so that it's not all dead? Let me explain where this billion billion comes from. Here's a diagram of the history of the universe. On one side is the Big Bang, lines spreading out of it, our galaxies spreading away from each other. We are over here on the other side at 14 billion years after the beginning. The red line are light rays moving past. When we look out into the universe, we see farther back in time because light takes time to get from there to here. And if we look all the way back to the very beginning, we can see a volume encompassing a trillion, trillion planets. But of course, most of them are very far away and hard to see. So to be conservative, I'll say, let's look at looking only a billion light years back. If you look only a billion light years back, you see a billion, billion planets in that scope, all of whom had 13 billion years to do something. So if Civilization started 12 billion years after the beginning of the universe. They've had a billion years to do something that we could see out there, which we don't see. That means there is a great filter. The great filter is what stands between ordinary dead matter becoming an expanding visible civilization. So on one side, we have 10 to the 18 planets that start out at the beginning, and they meet the filter of can they evolve life? Most of them can't. Some can. Of those, they meet the filter, can they evolve complex multicellular life, organisms like we are. Of those, they go to the filter, can they create a civilization like we are now. But then past us, there is the filter, can they go on to colonize the universe? And the important data point is out of the 10 to the 18 at least, planets we can see, None have succeeded so far. So there must be a huge filter, a huge set of obstacles between where we were and where we might hope to become. This filter could be in our past or in our future. So imagine the filter is less in the past. It's easier to go from the past to where we are. That must mean it's harder to go from where we are to the future where we might hope to become. Smaller past filters must become larger future filters. So, if we discovered life on Mars or Europa or anywhere else around, that would be very bad news. It would mean that the filter up to our point in history is easier than we thought. 
but that must mean the filter after our point in history is harder than we think or hope. That means something out there will kill us. It's even worse because I've talked as if all along the way, filtering steps take more and produce less until we get almost nothing. But we can have a process of panspermia, of spreading of life, where along the way, a small number of initial places with life spread to many places. And then a filter must come in after that and cut it down further. So the bigger the panspermia spread, the larger the total filter must be. Here are some candidates people have talked about for past filters. Maybe we need to be in the right sort of galaxy at the right sort of peaceful era. Maybe we need the right sort of star. Maybe we need the right sort of planet in the right orbit with the right size, the right atmosphere, etc. But in addition to needing a good planet and galaxy, it just takes time and difficulty for molecules to come together and create self-reproducing molecules. And then those have to try to find some way to make self-reproducing cells. And then Eukaryotes, the complex sort of cells that almost all of us are made out of, that most of complex life is made out of, that's a difficult step, perhaps. Creating sexual reproduction, which allows much faster spread of innovation, may be the difficult steps. Creating large organisms, like we are. Big brains, like we have. Civilization, like we enjoy for a while. Those are all possible past filter steps, and there may be more. But then in the future, there are potential filters that should concern us. Maybe we'll be hit by an asteroid or a supernova from outside, an earthquake from below, a pandemic will kill us all, or a war. Robots will rise and destroy us. A totalitarian world government may stop and freeze change and growth. Maybe it's just impossible to make starships. Maybe there are berserkers hiding out there waiting to destroy any civilization that becomes visible. Or maybe we will just lose our desire and interest to grow and expand. Those are all possibilities people have talked about. We know some things about which of these are more likely to be filters. It's just, given the rate at which we've been growing lately, it's very unlikely that an asteroid or supernova would show up in time to really make a difference. In addition, robots may kill us all, but then they would grow and become visible, <laughs> and we would see them in the stars. So a robot rebellion, even if it's something you're concerned about, is not an explanation for the great filter. In addition to that, there's something else out there that's ready to kill you. So where is this filter? So on the, on the bottom, I've listed 10 of the possible steps that I mentioned of where the filter could be. And I'm showing you 60 little blocks because 10 to the 18 equals 2 to the 60. So there's 60 factors of 2, at least, in the filter we know. If it was 10 to the 24, there'd be 80 factors of 2. So I've shown 60 blocks. Where could these factors of 2 be? In this diagram, I've said most of it is in the past. I put more of the filter in the distant past, where we don't understand things as much, and maybe where it's safe and far away. But still, a few are left in the future. And in this diagram, five are left in the future. Five factors of two. That's a factor of 32, means only a 3% chance we have of making it. Not very good. Of course, this is even worse. This says we'd have almost no chance of making it. But this is better. You could hope for this, maybe, that out of all the factors of two, only one remains in front of us. But still, a factor of two means we only have a 50-50 chance of making it. And think, of all these things we don't understand very well, how confident could we really be that 79 out of 80 of them are all behind us and we only have one left? That seems wishful thinking to me. You should be worried. Something's out there. We can break out kinds of filters into different categories. So, one kind of filter could be something that you have to do it right the first time or you never get to try again. So, all of us are built out of a genetic code, a particular way of mapping uh, sequences of DNA to proteins, and there are different possible genetic codes. And maybe life on different planets produces different genetic codes, and then once it produces that code, all of the life uses it, and it's too late to try another one. It takes over and it dominates. If we got the wrong code, maybe it, a planet would just be too late. They just couldn't go anywhere with that. Or so perhaps a civilization like ours needs to have the right sort of a sociality and if it just gets the wrong sort, it can never fix that because that sort dominates and fixes itself. That would be one kind of filter, where you have to get it right the first time, and it just to happen to go the right direction. Another kind of filter, though, is one where you just get to keep trying. So, for example, when you talk about the very first life, you might have to have the right sort of mix of chemicals, and that's sort of having it right the first time, 
or it might be that those chemicals just have to keep bouncing around back and forth until they find the right combination that makes a self-reproducing entity. And that could just be a try, try again filter. Just keep searching. Similarly, life on Earth has all these different species, and maybe you just have to keep trying different variations of species and combinations in different environments until you find one, say, that produces big brains or that does a particular sort of thing that we need. We can say interesting things about try, try again filters. Now, these filters, these try, try again filters could be of varying difficulties. Some of them could take an expected time of a million years or 100 million years or a billion or a trillion years. They could take a wide variety of different expected times. But we have a nice statistical theorem to say that they should still appear to take about the same time if they show up in a window. So let me explain. This is a diagram of the history of life on Earth starting from four and a half billion years ago up to today and continuing into the future to two to three billion years in the future when analysis predicts life on Earth will no longer be possible. So the filter could be like this. Life has to either arrive from elsewhere or start on a planet within the window of, for life, and then life has to go through a number of steps on, in that window before it reaches a point like us, before the window closes. So if, a if a many things have to happen within that window before it closes, and many of them are hard, then on average, if, even if the window is four billion, six billion years wide, it might be an average of a trillion years that it would take to finish that. So vast majority of planets would never finish that set of tasks before the window closed. But a few very rare planets would manage, luckily, to finish those tasks before the window closed. And in that case, what we can show is that the hard steps, the ones that would take a very long time, if they weren't lucky to finish in that window, those hard steps should take all about the same time in history, at least the ones that are the try-try steps, the ones that you have to go over and keep trying until you get it right. So the history of life on Earth and the timing gives us important clues into which are the hard steps in history. So one of, the, one of the key things is these spaces, this time spacing between these hard steps should be about the same, that is drawn from the same distribution within a factor of two or so, and the same as the window left now after the last step is done. And that looks like it's two billion years, maybe three billion years. That means these steps are wide in time. That means there can't be very many past try-try steps, maybe only one or two in the history of life on Earth. It also means None of them have happened in the last half billion years. If you know about history of life on Earth, almost everything you know is probably about the last half billion years, about the rise of organisms, the rise of brains, the rise of primates, civilization. All of that has happened very quickly in a small time. So maybe those could be filter steps of the sort where you have to get it right the first time, and you go the wrong way, and you never get another chance. But if they were try, try again steps, then they just can't happen in that time period. So maybe the filter is the original life or perhaps sex, maybe multicellular life of the complex sort we have, but nothing recently can be in the filter in the past. So there are not very many, at least within Earth. Of course, there could be filter steps that happened before Earth if panspermia is right and life first came from elsewhere to the Earth. All right, and it's even worse. <laughs> it's even worse than I've said so far. What I've been telling you so far is about what we know about history and what we know about what looks difficult, just looking at the mechanics of how things work in order to guess which are the hard steps. However, we also have an analysis of what's called anthropics, which is how to analyze the fact that you are selected. You are an observer who is selected from any other possible observers. That's called anthropic reasoning or anthropic analysis. And in that analysis, we have a number of different principles of reasoning, and one very standard popular one is the idea that if there are different possible universes that you could be in, and some of them have more creatures like you that you could have been, then you should expect it's more likely you'll find yourself in a universe where there are more creatures like you. That re principle uh, has many common implications that seem to bear out, although one of the implications is the universe should be basically as big as it possibly could, so probably infinite. Um, but that principle suggests that, in fact, the future filter is more likely otherwise than you would see. So setting aside all the analysis we've done so far, this anthropic principle says it's more likely the filter is in the future. So let me explain. Here I'm showing you up here a universe where the filter is early. So there are three planets here that move forward in time, and only one of them produces life. 
Once it produces life, it reliably goes on to produce civilization and then an expanding colonization visible wave. But only one of the planets does that, so the filter hits early. In this diagram, the filter hits after life. It's very easy to generate life, but very hard to generate civilization. And in this diagram, the filter is after us. In this diagram, it's relatively easy to generate life, it's relatively easy to generate civilization, but it becomes hard to generate an expanding colonization wave. These are three possible universes I've described. Now compare them. Where are more creatures like us? In the last one, because the filter is after us, then there are more of us. So this standard principle of anthropic reasoning, of observation selection, tells us all else equal, we should expect to be in that last scenario more than the first, because there are more creatures like us there. But that's bad news. <laughs> that means the filter is likely ahead of us more than we otherwise would have thought. But the filter being ahead of us means, do we remember? The universe is dark, cold, empty, dead. Something out there is killing everything, and you're likely next. Think about it.